Hey guys, what's up? Good evening, good morning, wherever you're at. Um, good day. So we're going to be looking at the SANIC Python framework, which is actually a web framework, which is ridiculously fast because it only works in Python 3.5. Um, it's using the latest async IO, uh, async and await features of Python 3.5. And it even handles JSON requests faster than Node.js. So at least that's what I've been told from the benchmarks. And it looks extremely exciting. Uh, probably one of the most exciting looking frameworks that I've seen in Python uh, in recent memory for sure. So let's go ahead and create a new folder here for my projects. Every time I do a new project, I need to go ahead and say open folder actually so I can create the folder. Oh, son of a bitch. I'm just kidding. I need to open up a different folder in one second. I'm going to say um, Sanic. So we'll go in there and select that folder. And now how many folders do we have open? Okay, we just have one, that's good. So I got a little bit of a cold, so if I'm clearing my throat off, it's annoying me just as much as it annoys you, so I apologize for that. So now that we have this folder called Sanic, let's go ahead and, uh, and go into that. So we're gonna look for Sanic down here. So Sanic, there we go. And I'm gonna go here and press CMD. I'm on a Windows machine, so don't make fun of me. And we're gonna set up a virtual environment and we're gonna call it environment or EMV for short. And I'm gonna set the no site packages flag so that way it doesn't share any sort of packages or anything across Python projects even if there is a dependency or a, um, a duplication of dependencies. If you have no idea what I just said, don't worry about it. Now we need to activate, activate our virtual environment. So I'm gonna say, uh, what do I say? CD space EMV, that's the name I called it. I'm going to go into CD scripts and say activate. If you're on Linux, you're going to say something like, um, um, shit, I don't remember. Uh, it doesn't matter. If you're on Linux, uh, you'll figure it out, I'm sure. All right, so let's see. Um, now we're going to pip install Sanic. Yeah, I'm just called Sanic. So hopefully this will work on Windows. If not, I'm just going to, well, let's try to install UV loop, which appears to be where the error uh, came. So we'll try to install UV loop and see if uh, we can and we can't. Well, fuck me, right? Because I'm using Windows. So it doesn't work on Windows. It's not going to work on Windows. That means I need to actually run it directly on my uh, Linux server. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to put this into my uh, music drive, I believe. Drive of music. There we go. I'm going to get rid of this uh, music. I'm going to say uh, sudo rmrf music. Okay, I'm sure you guys can't really see this. It's fine for right now. Let me make this a little bigger for you guys. Come on, putty. All right, that should be better, hopefully. All right, so now that I've done that, I now have a no music folder, which is fine. So I'm going to say make and dir music. And go into my music directory now. Now I'm going to do my virtual env. But I actually wanted to specify a specific version of Python, which uh, I want to be Python 3.5. I hope I have that installed. It's going to be a good question. Let's see if this works. Oh, it looks like it's working. That means I have Python installed on there. So now I'm going to say C space bin. Yeah, source activate is what I was trying to tell you before. All right, so now that we've activated our virtual environment, I can now say pip install Sanic. I forgot the name of the project I was even doing a video on. All 
you know, <clears throat> the more I do Python development, the more I realize like the next computer is either going to be half Windows, half Linux, or it's going full Linux because um, I, I just can't. I can't keep up with some of the latest Python shit when I'm dealing with Windows, man. It's just a fucking nightmare. Um, but the thing is, is that I'm a Python, or I'm not a Python, I'm a .NET C Sharp developer, so I need to have Windows working. In fact, I like Windows. It's what I've, it's really the only operating system I really know. Um, although I've been using, you know, the Linux command, uh, the Linux shell for, on Ubuntu for quite a few years now, and I run all my websites in Ubuntu. Uh, I'm still not comfortable with it. I'm not comfortable with it like I am with Windows. I mean, uh, hell, I remember installing stuff with MS DOS like way back, like way back in the uh, the late '80s and stuff like that. So I don't know. So now that I'm dealing with a Linux server on Windows environment, I'm going to be developing my Windows code within you know this shit here. And let's just go ahead and we're going to create our test.py probably a bad name so yeah we'll call it test that's fine I'm gonna say from Sanic import Sanic and I'm gonna plus in on this so you guys can see it this needs to be capitalized and then up here we're gonna say from Sanic dot import JSON. I'll say app equals Sanic. And this is very similar to Node.js if you guys have ever done Node.js. App.route. And we're going to use the async. And we'll say test. Yeah, this should this this might work. I don't know. I'm guessing now. I want. Um, let me think. I think I wanted to listen on port eighty. All right. So what I did in order to get this working um, on my Linux server, I had to set up a virtual private hosts in order to uh, tell Sanic to run. So the application remains the same. So this, what I did though is I went ahead and I used a different port number instead of 80. I changed it to 1337. So basically this tells it to spin up on the local host but then listen to port 1337. Now in order to have a web server actually be able to direct to this application and return this hello world, I needed to, um, to set up a virtual private host. So I have Nginx installed and going over to uh, Nginx here, I created a noobmusic.com under my sites enabled and sites enacted. And you can see that I have my URL, which I own, by the way. You have to have a domain that you own. And then I tell it to point to the uh, root directory of the project. And then um, down here, you can tell, you can see it's listening on localhost and then 1337. So what it does is it says, if you get this port number 1337, go ahead and direct it over to um, the, the application that's running. So then uh, the next step was that I had to, I had to spin up the server by saying python m sanic test.app, because test.py was the name of the file that we had. And then I give it the host with the port 1337. I tell it two workers because I think I only have two cores on my on my server. So then if I go to the website you can see that I'm getting under newmusic.com the hello world JSON data that was returned for the root directory. 
Now, if I killed the server by pressing Control C and I stop it, then I go back to the application. You can see that there is nothing listening there. So Nginx is actually telling it to forward it to the Python application um, that is being handled by SANIC. So another interesting thing I want to point out with the SANIC framework is that if you wanted to actually get st uh, static uh, files to be served, then you need to go ahead and add this app.static and then give it a directory name of the folder where your static content can be situated. So here I have my static folder, which is CSS, images, there's nothing in there, or JavaScript. And, um, and I have my main CSS, which takes H1s and it applies the color red. So what I'm doing is uh, I said from sanic.response, instead of returning JSON back, I'm saying HTML. And then I use that HTML right here and I actually return uh, HTML markup, which includes inside the head the external style sheet and you can see it's pointing to the static folder which we told it to look for here and then look for the CSS folder which is right here and then look for main.css and go ahead and deliver that and then here is my h1 so by doing all that and deploying this then you have hello world and the style is now colored red so we have static content being delivered by SANIC in addition to that, we also we are telling Sanic, hey, I want you to deliver this HTML. So um, this is absolutely ideal for single page applications because what I could do is I could actually say, you know what, I'm going to have a music based website and I always talk about my favorite band Bayside. Um, but I could say, you know what, I'm going to have uh, Bayside be a route and then Bayside is going to return some JSON data. So then what I would do is I would actually have a client side framework, something like Angular 2 or React or something along those lines that would actually be rendered down here and then it could actually make those additional requests um, to to pass down the data that it needs. Now another thing that, to make this cleaner is that you would probably want to take this HTML and extract it into its own separate file uh, possibly even under a templates directory so I could say templates and I want to get that out of static. Alright so templates and then um, we can go ahead and just say index HTML and inside here we're gonna that's not what I want to do I want to take all this content and put it here all right so now we have a more traditional HTML where we get the nice syntax highlighting and everything like that and instead of this I could then just do, do a uh, variable where I say template equals open alright so I'm jacking this all up what I'm going to do instead I'm going to say uh, import OS and then put a template We're going to say os.get cwd plus templates I'm going to see if that works any better because I was getting an error before where I wasn't able to find the directory so I'm such an idiot. The reason why I wasn't working is because I wasn't uploading the templates directory to the um, the server, so I wasn't able to find it. But uh, this is a cleaner way, I think, anyway, is just to say, you know what, let me create a template variable which uses os.get current working directory, and then we tack on the templates.index.html, and then when we return the HTML, we read it. So that's going to read it into a string, and it's going to return it to this HTML function, which is part of Sanic, so that's how you return a template. All right, so now what I've done is I've actually downloaded a uh, Bootstrap template, which is a, a very standard template using Bootstrap. And it has some stuff in here like uh, jQuery and JavaScript uh, that I need. So now Index has a lot more stuff to it, you can see. And what we need to do is then say uh, forward slash static for all these static URLs that, that we need to reference. So you have to go through that, that painstaking process of, of doing that anytime we have 
any sort of mention here of static content. And it looks like there's only a couple of them, so that's good. And now that we have uh, the refresh, if we look at new music, you can see that now see that we have this bootstrap theme that's being delivered by Sanic um, just that easily. So it was relatively painful or uh, painless process, I think. And you have the responsive layout and all that other stuff that we need. Um, so you can really take this and, and start building upon it to build, you know, your own modern day website. So now that you know the next step, and really not something I'm going to get into in this video, uh, would be to check out some of my tutorials that I have on things like um, like Webpack and uh, Redux. I also have some stuff on Angular and I plan on doing some more on that. But uh, the next step is to get a client-side framework in place that is just calling your, your Sandink API to grab JSON data and, and then display it. And I would do everything in like probably a single page app at that point because, you know, obviously what we've seen so far is that Sandink, you know, doesn't have a template engine or anything like that, at least not that I know of. And it's not made for that. It's made for speed, like raw processing speed for concurrency. Um, so, you know, I would I would stick to its strengths by saying I'm going to have just an index page delivered down. It's going to load some uh, you know, JavaScript, and then the JavaScript is then going to take over from there, and it's going to communicate with the API. It's going to post data. It's going to grab data. And um, for static content, I mean, it doesn't get any better than this, I, I don't think, for, for Python. So a lot of people are like, you know, just use Node because it's very fast. It's static content. You know, it's great for chat apps, but, you know, CRUD applications, it doesn't really excel at. But um, with something like this, I mean, this this competes just, you know, just as well or head-to-head -head with, uh, with Node.js, in my opinion, uh, at least what I've seen so far. So I think it's pretty cool. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Make sure you subscribe for more of this type of content. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. And make sure you share with all your family members. And also, this video is sponsored by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. So they offer both 12 and 16 week uh, intensive courses that are aimed to get your foot in the door of modern day web development and uh, and even app development as well. So like uh, they they do app and iOS development. Uh, so you can build Android apps, uh, Apple apps. And, um, and, and the idea is that they only focus on the technologies that you need to know in order to get your foot in the door. So Dev Mountain, all the information is in the description tab in this video below. And um, just to let you know, they do have on-site courses as well. So make sure you guys check those guys out. And they did sponsor this video. So thank you and have a good day. Bye.